I'm a hunter. But not in the traditional sense. What exactly is a cryptid? That's the question I ask myself every day. I'm a hunter, but not in the traditional sense. As you can probably guess, I hunt cryptids. Usually if people hear the term cryptid, they think of Bigfoot or Nessie, maybe even the Yeti. So basically of unlikely myths that don't even make sense. It's been proven multiple times that there isn't even a surviving Pleosaur in Loch Ness, for example. Meanwhile, I have to deal with actual terrors that aren't even close to these myths. I take on a giant humanoid ape with bare fists any day if that would mean I wouldn't have to face these horrific creatures ever again. But someone has to deal with them for humanity's sake. Of course, I'm not the only Crypt Stalker, which is the name the Overseers refer to us with. I can't actually give away any more information about us because it would endanger our whole operation as well as myself. So why am I writing this? I honestly don't really know. I guess I just wanted to get my last encounter off my chest. Anyway, here goes nothing. My target was a still unknown cryptid. These are the ones whose presence has been discovered but who have never actually been analyzed or exactly located. There have been numerous cases of a predatory creature feasting on cattle in the northeastern part of New Zealand's Northern Island. Carcasses of animals have been found with bite wounds of previously unseen dimensions, with some sheep even having been cleanly bitten in half, and full cow bellies having been ripped out in a single bite. The locals have been referring to it as New Island's Chupacabra, with some even suspecting the creature to be some kind of massive surviving descendant of the Hast Seagull. The area of its attacks was a mixture of a couple small forests and farmland, so I had plenty of land to cover. Fortunately, the cryptid had left a very distinguishable trail of killings within the aforementioned area, meaning it was territorial, but would move around and not have a set resting place like a burrow or a cave. I was staying at a cabin near the supposed next targeted farm. The owner was also the one that had first spotted the creature. He showed me the dead remains of some of his cattle. Truly a disgusting and unbelievable sight. The bite wound showed signs of large canine-like teeth, but also impressions of teeth or claws extruding outwards from the jaw. The remains of the cow had also been sliced open by some kind of claws, possibly the size of chef's knives. Good thing I brought almost a small armory with me. As dawn was breaking, I headed to a nearby hunting tower that was overlooking the farm. I had already set up my sniper rifle and enough ammunition for an entire battalion of soldiers there earlier. Other than that, I had armed myself with an M16, a Beretta 92, and my trusty bayonet knife, in case it came to close range combat. Underneath, I was wearing an anti-stab vest. I wasn't sure how much it would protect me from claws, but better safe than sorry. Even though I was as nervous as always, I still hadn't gotten over that. Staying awake wasn't easy. I had to fight against my eyelids falling down for hours. <gasps> I was startled awake by a horrifying growl and almost fell off my chair. Shoot, I actually did fall asleep. I sat up and looked through the scope of my sniper rifle at the farmland where the cattle were sleeping. Nothing unusual had happened. For a while, I almost thought I had imagined the growl from before. That's when I heard it again this time much closer and so much more intense that I felt dizzy and almost blacked out. When it was gone, I looked through the scope again. That's when I felt the wind sizzling against the left side of my face and saw some kind of creature snatching away a cow with such an unnatural speed that I didn't even get a look at it. There was just a, a black arrow darting across my field of view and, and, and then the cow was gone. I frantically looked around for the creature but couldn't see anything move. Out of nowhere, the roof of the wooden tower broke in, and the only thing I saw was a cow crashing through the whole tower. I narrowly avoided it, but the impact of subsequent damage made the tower collapse. In the heat of the moment, I instinctively grabbed my M16 and jumped out of the collapsing tower, but the night was pitch black, so I misjudged the distance to the ground and wasn't able to absorb the impact. A painful sting erupted in my left foot, and I had to suppress an agonizing scream. I looked down at my left foot, which had been twisted far more than I thought possible with blood all over it. 
On my adrenaline high, I managed to crawl behind some of the wooden scraps and inspected the wounds. I had dislocated my ankle and my whole leg was bleeding from small scraped wounds. With my knife, I cut a piece of my shirt off, put it in my mouth, and painfully <laughs> set my foot back in place. That's when I saw it. A giant beast landed right behind the scraps, unleashing a shockwave onto the ground around me. I peeked around the corner but couldn't comprehend what I saw. I'll still try to explain it. It was about three meters tall, probably more if it had fully stood upright. It had two giant bat-like wings with a wingspan of what I estimated to be about four to five meters. Its skin was covered in large moving scales, and its tail was about three meters long with a huge spike the size of a sword. The most haunting part of the body, though, was its head. It was massive. I couldn't believe that it was supported by the creature's body. It had large eyes the size of tennis balls, and there was a colossal set of teeth protruding almost sideways from its mouth. They were drenched in blood, and now I realize how it was possible to maul the cows so terribly. I was snapped out of my blinding trance when its eyes suddenly flicked around and looked me directly in the eyes. Its horrifying Medusa stare ran a shiver down my spine as I froze up in terror. It felt like it was burning its way through my eyes into my brain. I had hunted dangerous cryptids before, but none seemed as hellishly precise and smart as this unholy creature was. Luckily, I snapped out of it as it jumped at me, and I was able to narrowly avoid it. Its speed surprised me, but as fast as I could, I raised my M16 and just shot at any movement I could see. After a couple of seconds, it, it vanished from my field of view. I tried to run towards a small patch of forest where I would have had a better chance of surviving than in a plain open field, but immediately collapsed in pain. My foot was in worse shape than I had thought. I tried to pull myself towards my rifle when large, bird-like feet landed on it and completely crushed it under its weight. My life flashed before my eyes as it opened its mouth, revealing multiple rows of razor-sharp teeth, and let out a nightmarish growl of victory. In an adrenaline-fueled reflex, I pulled out my Beretta and unloaded the whole magazine deep into its bloody, incomprehensible maw. It made a horrible, disgusting, painful sound, and I pulled out my knife and blindly hacked away at its throat until I was certain that it had stopped moving. I fell over in exhaustion next to the decapitated corpse of the creature and took the first breath in what felt like minutes. I dragged myself towards the collapsed tower and rested my body against the broken remains. But when I turned my head to the side, I spotted a small black box on a part of the roof. I picked it up and squinted my eyes. It was an infrared sensor. What? That's when I heard a car engine starting in the distance and subsequently fading away. I made it back to the cabin after hours of dragging myself through grass and dirt and some failed attempts at walking. Unsurprisingly, it was completely empty and abandoned. It had been locked, so I sat on the porch and bandaged my wounds with pieces of my shirt, while triggering a signal on a chip to call for evacuation. I'm writing this into an empty notebook I found on here. A lot of pages have been ripped out, but there are still a couple left. Now I'm just waiting for the organization's rescue helicopter to pick.